Hi guys, my name is Robert Feranek. I'm from Federal Academy. Today I'm going to show you how you can use hot air gun to solder components with footprint like this. And when you will be soldering it, it will actually look like this. Watch the red rectangle and the corner of the component, how it, it's moving. Watch how it will move to the left and then go down. Left, down. See? Now you will know it's soldered properly. How you can do it at home? What will you need? You will need a hot air gun and it doesn't have to be the most expensive one. It's very useful if you can set temperature on the gun. So we use this one with the LCD display. And uh, before you start, you need to some kind of calibrate the gun. You need to know it. How you can calibrate it? Uh, you can use thermometer or you can do it the way how we did it. For prototypes, we use this leaded thing. Why leaded? Because uh, it has lower melting point, so we don't have to apply so high temperature on the components but it's only for the prototypes and it's only when we use this hot air gun this one has melting temperature 180 degrees so what we were doing uh, we actually took our hot air gun and placed it uh, one centimeter above a surface and then we used this thing and we were checking at what temperature this tin will start melting and we find out that uh, when we set uh, 220 degrees at uh, our gun then the tin will start melting so the difference is 40 degrees and then what actually you need to do is you need to check the temperature profile for your component this is our temperature profile and the maximum temperature here, TP. For the leaded soldering, it's uh, around 220 degrees. For the lead free, around 260. So we decided to go for 240. It means we had to set the temperature to 280 degrees. Before you start the soldering, you need to apply flux on your PCB. I show you how it looks. Looks like this. This is the flux. And then you need to apply thin layer of tin. I'll skip here. This is the thin layer of tin. Not too much, but there needs to be something on, on the parts. This is how it looks uh, under microscope. You see the tin on the parts. Apply a little bit of flux again, not too much, because uh, when uh, the flux vaporizes, the component will be moving a little bit. If you put there too much flux, it will flow on the flux. It will move away from the position. Then place that the component. Be careful about pin number one. And place the PCB on... Uh, maybe metal surface don't use this uh, wooden uh, table as i have it here this is only for demonstration and also good uh, it's good if you can place the pcb itself on something small maybe small nuts or something like this because then when you heat up the pcb the heat doesn't go away the pcb will heat up nicely then it's uh, very simple you just take the gun have your hands steady switch it on and go slowly down just 
hit the PCB first initially and then stay like one centimeter above the PCB and wait and watch the, the component. It will look like this. Now I switched on the gun and I will zoom in a little bit and use the red rectangle so you see very nicely how it will move. If the component moves too much, you can solder one or two pins a little bit before you start heating it up with the gun. So watch how it will sit down. It will move to the left now and it will go down. See? Nicely. Now the tin was melted and the component will be soldered properly. You can uh, leave it uh, for a half minute or one minute, continue heating and then you can slowly remove the gun and uh, leave it to cool down. Watch it again now without the zoom, so watch very carefully. It will go to the left now and it goes down now. The last thing what I always do is I go around the component and solder the pins also manually. Why? Because I've seen a lot of boards even from from production from real manufacturers with this kind of footprints and bad contact between pad and pin so when you go around you will be pretty sure the there is really good connection and it should look like on this picture to prove it really works this is the real pcb from the videos and it's running perfectly these techniques you can also use on BGA component. It will work. I hope you found this useful. I hope you will leave some comments how you tried this home and it worked. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.